Also, they give a, a, a sort of a spectrum of relation between um, parabolic dynamics and, uh, and hyperbolic dynamics. So, uh, so, th so this uh, let me just begin with, uh, with, uh, with this uh, um, just a scheme before I go to three things. So, so we have, here we have a parabolic flow. In fact, we have a family of parabolic flows. And in this family, we may have uh, self-similar ones. Self-similar. So this is the case of one. And this one are usually, uh, you know, in some community they call it orospherical for some maybe partially hyperbolic system. So in other terms, the, the, the orbit foliation of the flow of the parabolic flow is almost spherical for, for, for some partially parabolic, uh, uniformly hyperbolic system. <clears throat> so this is one case. It may be orospherical means that it's a full, full unstable. Sometimes uh, still there is a, a partial parabolic system, but not the full unstable. So there is the, ca the case which is uh, um, still very hard. So what if it's not orospherical? So this means that the full unstable, and then in the full unstable, you have a, uh, one parameter family, for instance, since it's a flow, but it's not the full unstable. So this is hard. And there is some work, in some cases, by Linda Strauss, Linda Strauss, some recent work by Lenny Strauss, Mohammadi, Mohammadi, and Wang, and some other related work. But so in, in, in homogeneous, so this, in this case is uh, unipotence in SL2R square, for instance. So that's hard. But then there is the case where. Uh, only approximately self similar. And let me also, uh, to make this more, uh, maybe more clear, uh, just give you some more familiar examples here. The self similar case will be, for, for instance, uh, linear flows, linear flows on T2. Uh, stabilized by a uh, cat map. Well, these are elliptic; they are not parabolic, but that's the same flavor. So you have a, you have a, you have an hyperbolic topomorphism that just stabilizes your your flow, and moreover, the flow is uh, orospherical, so it, it, its foliation is unstable. So, <clears throat> approximately similar means that uh, there is a renormalization flow. Renormalization flow. Well, renormalization flow on some other space. And this, this, in this case, the corresponding and, and well, and the, the flow. The parabolic flow. So there is a moderate space of uh, <coughs> of parabolic flow, more or less of parabolic flows, not quite, but uh, so all this is very vague. Um, and the parabolic flow that you're looking at is recurrent under renormalization. So in other terms. It, 
here we know that the linear flow stabilized by a cat map is very special. So for instance, as a, uh, as a slope, which is a quadratic irrational. But there are many more linear flows on the torus. With, you know, the coefficients can be arbitrary. So how do you get a generic coefficient? Well, in this case, in this column, where you look at flow on T2, the real multiplication flow will be just a modular flow. So the geodesic modular flow is the geodesic flow, well, essentially is what Mark was mentioning, except that uh, gamma, so it's uh, GT e to the T, 0, 0 e to the minus T, or maybe T over 2, uh, on on the quotient of uh, uh, PSL, well, SL2R uh, over SL2Z. So this is, uh, and so this is the part two, and then there is the part three that uh, basically no hyperbolic, no hyperbolic, system is inside, and so uh, maybe uh, no, no approximate uh, similarity, but this is uh, a question mark. So I stress that no, uh, the fact that the hyperbolic system is not in sight, it doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. In some, maybe someone comes and say, ha, that's what you have to do. But, so this is the, in some sense uh, the hopeless case at, at first. But then, the point is that, uh, I would, what I would try to argue is that the analysis, at least the analysis uh, that we do in the homogeneous situation, still can, can give answer in this case. And the idea is that simply forget about having, so the, the idea here will be just forget about uh, hyperbolic dynamics. And just, just uh, uh, do scaling. Uh, plus analysis. Well, plus analysis and plus geometry. But I will try to explain what I mean by this. So, in other terms, there will won't, there won't be there won't be an hyperbolic system. There is no more an hyperbolic system, but we we can still mimic what's going on in the above cases simply by thinking that what is the hyperbolic system doing? Well, it's just scaling the structure of the manifold, right? You know, it, it expands on one direction, contracts in another direction. And so that's, that's, the, that's the kind of plan. So, okay, so this is a very vague uh, uh, plan. And the, my point is that new flows will show the, the three, the three uh, uh, situations. So let, me, so let me give you some motivation for new flows. So motivation, motivation uh, from uh, motivation. In fact, uh, my original motivation is not really from number theory, but the idea was that uh, we want to what, whatever we do, it would be good to have uh, some uh, benchmark for how, how well we are doing, and this benchmark can come from number theory. Uh, so there are results in number theory that tells us that uh, maybe the results we're getting are comparable or not comparable, or how, how they how they move. So of course, if you have any questions, uh, you can interrupt me. So originally, the idea uh, comes from Furstenberg. So if we look at uh, we look at uh, uh, equidistribution equidistribution mod one of uh, uh, polynomial polynomial sequences. So maybe I try to uh, follow this quickly. So what do we do? Well, we take a polynomial with some some coefficient a. So this is a polynomial of degree say k, 
This is something that looks like this, a k, x to the k, etc., etc. A1 x, well, a0 doesn't really matter much. And um, you have to think that a is some vector in our case of 1. And uh, the important thing is that a k is going to be irrational. And, uh, uh, and uh, a little later on, in fact, a k will be dial phantom. So, and uh, in dial phantom, we'll essentially always uh, say that it's rot type. Now, uh, maybe I should define rot type. Rot type means that if I look at rational approximations, then I get a constant, uh, well, for every epsilon positive, there exists some constant C epsilon. Uh, positive such that this bound uh, is, uh, let's see, 2 cross epsilon uh, for every p, q integers, q different positive. So this is a, an example of the authentic condition, and I will uh, usually assume that, just for simplicity, that we are in the rough type situation. But before we go, we go ahead, what we, what we need to, to show here, we need to show that, we want to show that uh, if we look at this sequence, pk, pk, n, n in n, uh, this sequence is equidistributed, equidistributed, uh, mod 1. So it's uh, so in, on the circle. And uh, well, there are classical results that, in fact, in fact, uh, this is classical, classical results in in, uh, in number theory. Uh, even give a uh, effective, effective equidistribution. So what is effective equidistribution? Well, it simply means that, uh, so one way to measure equidistribution is just to take, uh, say, a character of the circle, say, an exponential, and uh, look at the sums of, uh, uh, of this character over the sequence. So, so, so there are the so-called Gauss or Weil sums. Sum, and I want to see that uh, so equidistribution means equidistribution equidistribution uh, mod one. Uh, if and only means that uh, W K A N is equal to uh, well divided by N, let's say, side goes to the and you see that this is really like, uh, essentially, if I put here a rotation, this is just ergodic, ergodic unique ergodicity for the rotation. And if, the, if this sequence is linear, so for k equal to 1, this is unique ergodicity uh, for uh, rotation. Of course, I, I need the leading coefficient to be rational, but that is just that. And, um, so it has some dynamical flavor and uh, choke here. And in fact, uh, there are bounds on this. So, so bounds, bounds on by sums. OK, so the bounds of by sums have a long history. So, uh, in, in, so there is the first results are in 19, 1914. Uh, 16, 
1916, something like this. And so this is Ardy Littlewood, uh, Ardy Littlewood and uh, Vile. Basically, and I, I, I said I assume rock type, just to simplify the statements. So the size of uh, WK AN is going to be less, or is going to be big O, uh, big O epsilon of uh, N, 1 minus 1 over 2 to the K minus 1 plus epsilon. So that's the, that's the value <coughs> result. And uh, so so uh, the other little result is in uh, in the case uh, k equal to two, so it's degree two. Uh, I will sort of ignore the case k equal to one, which is the case of rotations. That of course uh, is simpler and uh, everything is known. I mean, I mean, not everything, but a lot. So, so then, um, what is that? So, so k equal to two. This is this. The result is already already essentially essentially optimal. Let me convince you that it's already essentially optimal. The reason is, uh, is the following. K equal to 2 degree 2, this is a half, right? But let's look at how the, how the, uh, the vile sum, uh, the L2 mean of the vile sum behaves with respect, say, to, to one of the coefficients. Fix, fix the first coefficient, but just integrate L2 with respect to, say, A1. Or, well, then you get, uh, you get exponential orthogonal, so you get some kind of CLT kind of a uh, very simple statement that says that the behavior of the, of the L2 mean has to be square root, right? Is it clear? So you, just, you just look at the sum, but uh, you know, just take the, L2, take the L2 mean, take the L2 norm with respect to, say, uh, the subleading coefficients. And then you get uh, the square root behavior. So the square root behavior should be optimal one. So, so uh, but for k larger than three, well, uh, long, uh, long struggle. So the long struggle. Uh, let me try to make it. So there is a. A big breakthrough in '35 by Vinogradov that basically uh, modify. I mean, could, could go from from uh, uh, exponential decay. So, so now we look at say large k, large degree. So the Gradov replaced the one over two k minus one by something like one over constant uh, k square log k. So the decay is much slower. And he did it by looking first at the mean, so, so, so it's the Vinogradov, the method is based on Vinogradov integral. The Vinogradov integral is basically averaging, averaging uh, over, over the A's, well, over the sub, over not the, uh, yeah, over the A's. And then getting bounds for this, and uh, from that uh, going back to specific coefficients, and uh, they formulated a, a conjecture. It's called the Gradov main conjecture, and uh, I'm not going to state it, but uh, the Gradov main conjecture is is a conjecture over. It's an optimal conjecture, so this is optimal. Uh, it's known that you cannot do better. Uh, and uh, from the Gradovic conjecture, by some method in analytic number theory, one can get an uh, estimate on that. And uh, the point is that uh, this was proved <coughs> by Bourguin, uh, the matter uh, in 16, 
And there is also a uh, proof by Woolley. Uh, well, Woolley proved it in K equal to 3, and then uh, almost proved it in, uh, I mean, let's say Woolley, uh, the complete proof uh, got a little later. But I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to state it or tell you uh, what the conjecture says. Let me just say that it improves the exponent. It allows to improve the exponents from, from, from this, or actually from that. So if you want, uh, let's do this. And in between, there, there is a lot of work. So this, this constant got, got, got first to, to be estimated to be 4. The log was eliminated, so you know, like 60, 60, 70 years of work. And then here is like 1 over k, k minus 1. Well, of course, there is a plus epsilon, right? But uh, what is it? Yeah, there's a plus epsilon. So I'm talking about what you can put this, this what is sometimes called the power, power saving. So you see that this is still very far from very far from a half. So is it optimal? Uh, nobody knows, and I'm not going to tell you. I don't know. <laughs> but so then. Then the point is that uh, on, on, another, on another line of thought, Furstenberg, Furstenberg uh, proof of uh, equidistribution in mod 1 of uh, EKAN. So, so I told you everything I'm going to tell you about by sums, so to speak. And now I'm, I'm talking about how you do it by dynamics. So by dynamics, you do it like this. So first time I proof, it was the following. You just look at the map dt, uh, dk, y1, yk, equal to y1 plus, say, alpha, y2 plus y1, yk plus yk minus 1 uh, on tk is a linear skew shift. And, uh, so, and then you look at the uh, powers, right? So, oh, so what, what did was it uh, first ever proved? Prove, first ever proved that if, if alpha is irrational, then tk is uniquely ergodic. In other terms, I told you at the beginning that for rotation is just unique ergodicity of rotations, and for for a high degree is just unique ergodicity of, of the linear skew shift. This is something that you've probably seen in a dynamics course. So I'm repeating the basic thing. Now, the point is that if you do tk to the n, uh, OK, the first coordinate is just uh, y1 plus n alpha. And then on the last coordinate, you get yk plus um, something like uh, uh, y, uh, yk minus 1 n plus yk minus 2 binomial coefficients n over 2 plus alpha binomial coefficient n over k, at least if n is larger than what well, k or something like this. And you see here you have a, a nice polynomial uh, with the leading coefficient alpha over k factorial. So here is your p, k, a, n. And of course, you can see that by choosing the point, you can adjust the coefficients. And so you have it, right? So you will tell you that. It's enough to choose a function f, which is just exponential 2 pi i of the last coordinate, right? And, uh, and then just do ergodic averages for this function, and you get exactly uh, equidistribution of the, of the polynomial sequence. <laughs> Questions? Now, how? How to make this uh, effective? So 
So the so the, the, the goal, or I should say that this is work in collaboration with all, all of it. It's a long, long story that is now, I guess, over, or maybe not. But I work with Livio Flaminio. And this is inspired, very much inspired by work uh, in, uh, well, by which uh, phenomenon for, for those of you that know what it is, and also by our work on our cycle flows. By asking myself. So, first of all, we don't like maps. We like flows. Because, of course, flows can be foliations of hyperbolic systems. And with maps, we don't know what to do. So, uh, we, we, we just, the first thing we do is suspension, suspensions of, uh, of the skew shift, TK, with a constant. In fact, you can take identical to one a roof. So, well, actually, we didn't get to this this way, really, but I'm telling you this way. So, uh, if we do this, so it's kind of an exercise to show that if you just take the suspension in the usual way, so the suspension, just to recall, if we have a base, in this case, the base is TK, we put uh, a roof function uh, 1, and then we have this, uh, and then we go vertical until we hit the roof, and then we come back. So here there's some point uh, uh, y on the torus, and here we have the point uh, t, k, y. So that's the suspension, and the important thing is that the roof is constant, so, so the ergodic integrals of the flow are really ergodic sums of, of, the, of the map. Uh, we don't have uh, trouble in going from one to the other. And so what, what are the sus suspensions? These are, uh, in fact, new flows. New flows of a, a special kind uh, called filiform. So let me now tell you, I'm not going to, to prove, prove it to you that uh, this gives uh, filiform flows. I'm just going to tell you what are filiform flows. Oh, I, I forgot to, to say something that I wanted to say. Of course, it's a kind of a Central remark. So here, I, I so it, it's related to my my vague picture at the beginning. So this this case uh, is in fact the similar. So self-similar means also approximately approx the approximate similarity is included. So this is the case where renormalization works. Now, this is not a new uh, uh, discovery. This was clear, I think it's quite clear also in Arctic Littlewood, but it's been exploited enormously. In the, in, there is an enormous literature in k equal to 2 uh, with limit distributions, uh, cure decues, uh, uh, optimal results of all sorts. Um, some people that work on this are Markloff and collaborators, Fedotov and Klopp, uh, myself and Livio. Uh, feeder, uh, in older paper, feeder, John Cat Kerner. So this is really the case where you have renormalization, you do a lot of things. And this is the case where, mm -hmm. that's the case where in my initial scheme was the case number three, where you don't have an hyperbolic. And you basically you don't know much, you, you don't know what to do, and probably at least it's not clear what to do. So sorry for this information. Let me go back to questions. So what, what sort of net flows? So I will begin with the Lial. So net flows are, sorry, are flow homogeneous flows on quotients of uh, net floating groups. So there is the resembles a little bit to the systems that Mark was considering, but Mark was considering uh, semi-simple semi -simple groups, and here we have net floating groups. So to give you the net floating group, it's uh, convenient to give you the algebra. So, so I'm going to define the field from the algebra. 
or, or with the simplest field from the algebra because uh, and uh, uh, step k step k is, uh, means how many time how many commutators you have to take until you get trivial so it's, I don't never remember what is the name of the series uh, the whatever series that depends in the, in the important case so the algebra is with as generators generated uh, by x by one y k uh, with with uh, the only non-trivial computer relations are the following form x y one is y two uh, dot 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 x y one plus one sorry x y i is y i plus one and uh, x y k is zero and you see that in fact it takes k commutators to, to get to zero in this case and um, all the other commutators are zero so in particular this is very special because it has an abelian, abelian ideal of dimension k and indeed this Abelian ideal dimension k is really the tangent to a torus embedded in the new manifold. There is no minimal manifold yet. And when you look at the return method in flow to that torus, uh, we get the skew shift. So the, the, the notation is not uh, random. The y's are really the vector field that corresponds to the y on the torus. Um, but so that's the Lie algebra. So there, there, is a, there is a group, an important group, so the theory for the theory for a group uh, is uh, uh, the the one with the above the one with the above the algebra, meaning that is the one which is connected, simply connected uh, with the above the algebra. Let's call it F K. Uh, this is the real F K, but maybe I don't need the notation. And, uh, and then and then we have uh, um, uh, we have a, a quotient so n k will be n k or some gamma k now. The portion is on the left because video wouldn't have it otherwise. <laughs> but uh, I think this is the convention in homogeneous dynamics, so the portion is on the left. So, oh sorry, this is supposed to be FK or filiform and not fully important. And gamma K uh, is the lattice. Now, in the, in the world of, uh, of important groups, a, lat a lattice is necessarily to compact. So, there are no local compact lattices. So this is a compact manifold. And this compact manifold, you, you, you can think of, you can see you can see it as a suspension of the, of the k-torus, right? That's exactly what I'm saying. Uh, if you take the k-torus and do a suspension using this uh, TK maps, that's what you get. So, and what is an inflow? Well, you take a, an element of the algebra, so the, the flow. You take an element of the algebra. This element v will be usually of the form x plus uh, alpha one y one. That's the important part. Ta -ta -ta. Maybe there are other coefficients, but these coefficients are, are really not so important uh, because they can be interchanged with by changing the point on the on the manifold. So they are not really important. This one is the one, important one. Is the frequency on the torus. Uh, and then what you do is uh, uh, G gamma, so uh, phi T V of gamma K G is just going to be gamma K G multiplied by the exponential of T V. So that's just the basic general definition of, uh, of the homogeneous flow. And now let me just... Uh, Talk a little 
escape what to do. Well then, uh, what we get is the Eisenberg. Eisenberg. The algebra, well, the Eisenberg, the algebra, and so a group, and we, we talk about Eisenberg inflows. Right, because if you look at the relations here, we only have x, x y1 is equal to y2, so y2 is the center, and maybe we want to call the z. So, so, the, so the relation here are the following, like x, y equals z, and this is like y1, and this is like y2 in my previous notations. And uh, in fact, uh, the Eisenberg uh, group, the three-dimensional Eisenberg group, H3R, which can be followed as the uh, usual, I mean, customary presentation. presentation. So it's a group of uh, upper triangular and uh, matrices. Just a little bit more concrete. And, uh, and, and then you can take M2, well, M2 because I use the, the step. M2 is going to be H3. R over H three Z. So that, and, and then we are looking at uh, uh, new flows here. Notice that uh, one thing that one should keep in mind is that uh, there, is a, there is a general theory in flows that says that basically if you want to understand any flow, you have to look at. Uh, uh, the underlying abelian eyes, so this is the so-called abelian eyes. So there are two tori here. There is a k torus that is embedded in mk, which is the torus which is transverse to the flow and which gives me the skew shift as a return map. But it's also a abelian eyes torus that is basically spanned by the projection of x and y1 in my notations. And the abelian eyes torus is where the frequency lives. So, and uh, the frequency here is, is really given by this number here, this frequency. And the general theory of NIF flow says that uh, the NIF flow is in the ergodic if and only if the frequency is irrational. So you look at the projection, you look at what happens to the, uh, what frequency you get, so this number here. If it's irrational, then you have a unique ergodic NIF flow. This is a very general theory that uh, summarized by the book of Az Aslander, Green, and Hahn uh, in the 60s. Uh, so the, the topological and uh, uh, qualitative ergodic theory of inflows is completely understood. And uh, what about the uh, effective or quantitative theory? Now, let me just say right here that there is a so effective theory, effective effective theory, effective uh, ergodic theory uh, of, of the flows. So there is a completely general result that g goes even beyond new flows uh, to a polynomial sequence on new manifolds. This is the Green Tau 2012, I think, or something like this, 2010's paper. Uh, but uh, which is very general and but uh, uh, the exponents, the exponents are not, are not explicit. <coughs> so they say that there is some power gain, but they don't say what is the power gain. And by the method they, they use, presumably, presumably, are not better uh, than uh, than vile. Since it's, the method is essentially a far-reaching generalization of, uh, of, uh, of the vial or van der Korput uh, techniques. So, so this is just uh, to say that, yeah, there, is, there are results about uh, polynomial speed, but they are not they don't come with very, very much information about, uh, about what the exponent is. OK, so uh, going to the Eisenberg case, so Eisenberg New flows. Okay, so how much time do I have? Um, 
13 minutes. 13 minutes? Yeah. But okay, so uh, yeah, so it's a bit difficult. So isomeric flows, uh, first of all, they have they have a partially hyperbolic automorphism. And uh, which are which are exponentially mixing, and in fact, uh, exponential mixing for for the automorphism is more or less the same thing. Well, in this context, uh, it is. Notice that these hyperbolic maps, since they are tailored to smooth parabolics, they have smooth foliation. So there is no issue with the foliation. They are really nice foliations. In this case, they are completely algebraic. So the exponential mixing for the automorphism is more or less the same thing as the, um, as the uh, polynomial, polynomial, or, uh, uh, polynomial bounds or power law bounds, power law bounds uh, for, for the unstable, unsta unstable uh, for the unstable foliation. And so for the, for the The unstable foliation in this case is one-dimensional, so the need flow is orospherical. It goes along the full unstable, and one can actually use this uh, uh, correspondence to get uh, speed of ergodicity. So this would be the what at the beginning I called this a similar case. In fact, since we are in a algebraic situation, we can actually compute, compute all the so-called real polygon uh, resonances. And uh, but I think this is, this was done first by Fogg. And then there is also a non-linearization, non-linear version by Four and Suji. So, but this is really uh, non-linear. I mean, non-algebraic. So that's much uh, stronger result. Um, now, I'm not going to say more about this, but this, the, basically, what I'm trying to say here is that there is a special case of uh, new flows that are stabilized that are orospherical for for uh, for automorphism, and one can indeed, uh, in the algebraic case, compute uh, explicitly all the uh, mixing asymptotics for once, uh, and uh, the, by the same ideas, by the same token, also uh, the, the power of bounds, and in fact, one gets the half, the one half. Uh, the, 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 the resonances are actually minus a half, minus k. I mean, at least they're, they're mm. something like this. But let me just skip this. So what I want to, to, to try to sketch is, uh, uh, first of all, the Eisenberg uh, renormalization. So the other renormalization is, uh, goes as follows. So instead of fixing an automorphism and, uh, and uh, an Eisenberg triple, because the automorphism gives us, well, it, it preserves the center. So it gives us a, a triple, x, y, z, which is actually has the right commutators, which is the unstable, the stable, and the center. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at uh, the space of triples. So z here is always the center, and, uh, and this is, we call it this, the uh, deformation space. Now, this is, these are supposed to be vector fields. So uh, I think of this as vector fields, vector fields on, on M2, on the, on the manifold. So on the manifold, we have all these triples, and then, uh, um, this D is actually in one-to-one -one correspondence with the automorphism of, uh, of, uh, of a group that fix uh, the center. So, automorphism of, uh, of, uh, of a group fixing, fixing 
etc. And, uh, and then um, we define a flow on this, uh, on this uh, space, which is kind of trivial. So, so the flow will, will send x, y, z into e to the t x e to the minus t y and z. Notice that, of course, this preserves the, the commutation. And of course, it's a trivial flow, but then it projects, it projects uh, onto the quotient uh, d over a gamma, where a gamma is a subgroup of, of, of out zf2 uh, of uh, elements preserving preserving gamma, the lattice gamma. So when we project, it becomes a non-trivial dynamical system. And, uh, and you see the periodic orbit. This is a construction that comes from technical dynamics, or it can, if you want, it comes from uh, the modular flow. So what's going on here is that when this, when this flow on this quotient returns to a compact set, well, this means that a scaled version of the triple is identified to itself by some elements, by some automorphism. In particular, periodic orbits corresponds to uh, automorphism. So every, every periodic orbit is, is an automorphism. Every automorphism is a periodic orbit. And uh, the normalization flow is a normalization flow. And it's a flow on some five dimensional uh, manifold, uh, which projects onto the modular flow. Uh, the manifold is non-compact, but the fact that it is uh, is anosov is not so important. The important thing is that recurrent points for this renormalization flow are going to give us the uh, approximately similar uh, axis. So that's the and then um, the the idea is basically that in this setup. Um, In the setup, we have to uh, we have to choose we have to study uh, study so so ideally uh, so in the case in the case of the single map, what we do is study the transfer operator, and here the transfer operator has to be replaced by some kind of transfer uh, cocycle. In other terms, uh, it's a cocycle. It's a cocycle uh, over a bundle on the bundle on the bundle over this space uh, called the moduli space uh, a gamma over d over a gamma with fiber with fiber maybe some. Uh, space, I'm, I'm vague here because these have not been done, some space of uh, distributions uh, W, X, Y, Z, uh, M that depends on, uh, on the triple that we're looking at. Now, in the, in the work we did, we, we, the space of distribution that we use is simply the invariant distribution for X. So for, for for uh, the, the 2006 paper where this is coming from, uh, our space W, uh, X, Y, Z is simply the space of uh, uh, distributions D in uh, D prime M such that X, D is equal to zero. And since we, we in, a, in this setting, we can solve the cohomological equation, controlling the invariant distribution is enough to control uh, enough uh, of the space to actually, to actually get results. So now um, then, well, I don't have a lot of time, but I, I try to wrap up by telling you what we do, so, so by, by this idea, so you see the idea is that uh, essentially work on a modular space and work with the renormalization flow and 
that in some sense is the same thing as say that we take a certain, se certain sequences of automorphisms, not a fixed one, not the iterator of a fixed one, but some uh, composition of a sequence of automorphisms which are se selected by some uh, uh, renormalization dynamics. And we want to do the same thing for, for this sequence as for uh, a single one. Now the case, K, W, L3. Now first of all, let me just state the theorem. So this theorem is a long uh, uh, project. Uh, there was a version, a partial version uh, around 2014. But now in 2023, we have, uh, uh, so we have kind of completed it. And basically, this means that, uh, 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 let me just state the corollary. Uh, the corollary is that uh, Wn, Wk, An is indeed big O of uh, N 1 minus 1 over K, K minus 1 transaction. So this is uh, matches, basically matches. Well, the conditions on A are uh, here are rough, so. Uh, then, if you look at uh, matches blue gain, blue gain, uh, the matter, and good, and good. And how does it go? Well, um, so let me just give you. Uh, some ingredients. So, so, so we have to we look at we look at uh, uh, the previous case, the Eisen renormalization, and we we think in the following way. So, Eisen renormalization is really rescaling. So, we get a different a scale triple on the manifold. This different triple will give, will give us some Riemannian metric on the manifold just by taking the vector, the vector field to be orthonormal, and this will give, a, uh, give us a geometry. Now, the fact that the point is so similar just says that the geometry is not degenerating. So we have bounds on, uh, on, the, on the geometry. So the basic heuristic is as follows. So scaling, uh, scaling, Plus control of geometry uh, should imply ergodicity. Well, here we have it, but should imply effective, effective ergodicity, provided one can do uh, the suitable analysis. So now, of course, we are in a good position because we have a theory of unitary representation, which is a very uh, effective tool. And so, to give you an idea, the scaling, so here we have uh, uh, our filiform Lie algebra, and we want to scale it, and the scaling is going to be the following, so e to the tx, that's just the normalization, and then we have e to the, let's see, uh, e to the minus uh, k, uh, 2k, k minus i, divided by k, k minus 1, and yk is left alone. So this scaling is, uh, how do we choose this? So this is a crisis, oh, uh, sorry, there's a t here. So, so for instance, uh, in k equal to 3, the scaling will be e to the tx, e to the minus 2 thirds t y2, uh, y1, e to the minus t thirds y1, and y2. And uh, well, this doesn't really seem to come from a uh, diffeo or from an automorphism. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, it certainly defines a deformation of the Riemannian metric. And, uh, and then we can just uh, do the same, essentially follow the same proof. So, so the, maybe just the last two words. So the scaling is chosen, so these are more technical comments. Scaling is chosen to optimize, optimize uh, the, the scaling, the scaling of uh, x 
in driving distribution. And, uh, and the hard part, but I'm not going to, I don't have time to, is to control the geometry. So this is really what gets us stuck for many years. Uh, to control the geometry means that this is the fine sub Riemannian metric, RT, uh, with the uh, property that the above matrices are orthonormal. And one wants to know that the, the injectivity radius of this metric is not uh, going to zero fast. So you, one is bounced on the injectivity radius. And, and, uh, and then uh, the rest is just uh, some, some harmonic, non abelian harmonic analysis to, to compute uh, how the norms of the invariant distribution scale with respect to subolic spaces given by this vector field. How do they scale? So sorry for being do we have some questions for Giovanni? Frederick? Um, when you write here the space of distribution, so the foliation is dense? Uh, is it dense? Yeah, yes. yeah that, that's, that's a typical. I mean, here is a, it's a, it's a bundle, so. so uh, the, general, the, the, the typical point would be, yeah, in the periodic, so that's so the question is, in general, when you have a dense uh, pollution, yes. uh, in which case uh, the space of distribution is non-trivial? Oh, that's a, uh, well, that's a very hard question that uh, I don't have the answer to. I think that uh, uh, there are, uh, okay, so in the homogeneous, I, can, I, I have some answers, actually. In the homogeneous setup, uh, there are no invariant distribution only if the flow is a toral flow. So it's a diffeomorphic to a toral flow. It doesn't have to be a torus, it could be a sol man manifold, but it has to be a torus essentially. So the, otherwise, you, always, you always have infinitely many uh, independent invariant distribution. This is the homogeneous setup. So it's smooth homogeneous flow. This is uh, by a paper by me, Livio Flaminio, and Federico Rodriguez Serz. Uh, otherwise, if you go to the nonlinear situation, there is a, there is a, a conjecture attributed to Katok, uh, Erdel Katok, or um, I don't know, Herman, okay, that basically says that if, if, the, if, there are, if there is only one invariant distribution, which means the invariant volume, and the, and the range of the lead derivative operator is closed, so this is what's sometimes called stability, then it should be, a, again, it should be a total flow, essentially, up to time, up to maybe uh, so, but on the other hand, if you if some new details, so you have some kind of new billion behavior, like uh, new billion behavior form, uh, then you can have situation where you have the only invariant distribution is uh, is the is the is the volume. So there is only one. Is the so if you need a periodic, and these are examples do for this for instance to Avila and basically they depend on uh, annals of Katok uh, fast periodic approximation. So you can cook up flows, no linear flows, where there are no invariant distributions except for, which are uniquely ergodic, and there are no other invariant distributions. But I think this, there are very few examples, and this is a big mystery factor. I mean, it's, it's a, uh, that's it. I, w I wish I could tell you more. <laughs> Any more questions? Okay, let's thank Giovanni.